Today we celebrate the feast of St. Simon and St. Jude Apostles, and in today's Gospel reading, notice how uh, before our Lord calls his disciples to himself to choose the twelve that will be the closest to him, it mentions that he went to the mountain to pray, in other words, he was by himself in a, in a lonely place, and it mentions that he spent the night in prayer to God. Now we have other passages where it mentions that our Lord spent the entire night uh, night in prayer and often he would wake up very early to go and pray in a, in a lonely place. But the fact that it's mentioned here is very significant and it's a reminder to us that in the same way our Lord, before he's going to do uh, something important such as to select the twelve apostles or yeah, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, if you remember, he went to pray. In other words, he was preparing for his passion and death. So before any major event or significant event in your life or any major decision, difficult decision that you have to make, consult God. It makes perfect sense to do that. You know, so often when you're trying to make a decision, a financial decision, you might consult with financial advisors which is a good thing to do. Or, you know, if it's real estate, some real estate agents and, and things like that. You know, we, we often make use of experts or sometimes we do research on the internet pertaining to some of the decisions that we make. But a lot of people neglect to consult God, to receive the inspiration of God. Now, it's not as if God is going to say, do this or do that. But God will enlighten us and God will make us find things or stumble upon things that will actually help us in the decision-making process. So it's very important that we consult God. And as I mentioned, a lot of people neglect to do that. In regards to the two saints, the two apostles that we celebrate today, Simon and Jude, notice how they are mentioned as Simon, who was called the Zealot, and Judas, son of James, or in some translations, Judas the the brother of James, or in some trans, uh, in the list uh, in another place, Judas Tadeus. And the reason they're mentioned in this way is to distinguish them from the other apostles because there were two Judases and there were two Simons. So there's Simon, Simon Peter, the apostle, and there's Simon who was called the zealot, there's Judas Iscariot, and there's Judas Tadeus, or Judas, Judas the son of James. And in regards to Saint Judas, we usually refer to him as Saint Jude. And the reason we refer to him as Saint Jude and not Judas is to distinguish him from Judas Iscariot. Now, as you know, Saint Jude is known as the patron saint of um, impossible cases or, or lost causes. So in other words, Judas's Saint Jude's intercessory power is extremely great. Every now and then I come across these things that are left at the back of the church, novenas to Saint Jude. And whenever I come across these, I will look them over, make sure they are the ones that I'm looking for or concerned about, and I will rip them up and throw them in the garbage. And why do I do this? And the reason is because there's nothing wrong with doing a novena to St. Jude. There's nothing wrong with praying to St. Jude. It's something the church encourages. But the church does discourage superstition. What is superstition? Superstition is kind of the belief, well, you just do something and something's automatically going to happen. So you throw salt over your shoulder, you're going to have good luck. That's superstition. Or don't walk under a ladder. That's bad luck. Whenever I see a ladder on the street, I purposely walk under it because I believe in God. I don't believe in superstition. I'm not saying you should walk under a ladder. The reason you shouldn't walk under a ladder is because something is likely to fall on you. But anyways, superstition is wrong. And these novenas, it says, well, make nine copies every day um, and leave them in nine different churches or leave them in a church for nine consecutive days. And no matter how impossible your petition may be, your request, it's guaranteed to come true. So any prayer, any devotion that guarantees that your request will come about, it's false. 
because God, we can't force the hand of God. We can't do these novenas for nine days, make these nine copies and force the hand of God and, you know, I'm going to win the lottery just because that's my petition. No, that's nonsense. And the problem with these kinds of devotions is, first of all, it's not Catholic, it's superstitious. And secondly, um, when you don't get the petition you've asked for, you lose faith. So these devotions weren't really started by Catholics. I think they were started by people who kind of thought, let's see how gullible Catholics can be and let's just do this and see if they really do it. And Catholics started doing it. So if some people do get their petitions answered, well, it's not because they did those things for nine consecutive days. It's because of their faith or maybe it was the will of God that this should happen. So no problem doing a novena to St. Jude but when you add like a superstitious element and when you guarantee that it's going to happen, that's not Catholic and that's not based on faith. And we should have the faith to accept that if it's not God's will, we have to be resigned to that and to accept that. In other words, we don't lose faith if our petition is not granted. In regards to Simon the Zealot, why is he called the Zealot? Some people speculate it's because he was so zealous for the Jewish faith initially and afterwards for the Catholic faith, and that's very possible. But others speculate that he actually belonged to the group of Zealots who were kind of a, a group um, that existed at the time of our Lord who were trying to uh, push the Roman occupation out of uh, Palestine, out of Israel. In other words, they wanted to be freed from the Roman domination. And they were very zealous for the faith, yes. They were very observant of the faith, very much like the Pharisees, but they were not part of the ruling class of the Pharisees, but they were laymen. But they also resorted to violence. And some of them were assassins, and they would occasionally assassinate various Roman individuals. So they resorted to violence. They had a bad reputation. The Romans were very concerned about their presence. So they were kind of like freedom fighters, you could say. Um, so the fact that they were zealous is a good thing. The fact that they resorted to violence is not a good thing. It's a bad thing. So there is some speculation that not just Simon the Zealot, but also St. Jude were both of the party of the, of the Zealots. And of course, they were zealous for the faith, the Christian faith also. They made the effort to spread the Christian faith. So Simon the Zealot preached the faith in Egypt, whereas St. Jude preached the faith in Persia, but both of them were martyred in Persia, and hence we celebrate both of them together and also because they are listed together in the list of the apostles. So in regards to St. Jude, the reason he became known as, as the saint of impossible cases is, as I mentioned, because when people prayed at his tomb, all these miracles occurred. And it's kind of like he wanted to prove that um, he can be just as successful as the other apostles in interceding on our behalf because some people neglected him. And it's just a reminder to us not to neglect the saints. We have these great saints, saints like St. Jude, St. Simon the Zealot, who are interceding on our behalf, who are willing to intercede on our behalf, provided we call upon them. And the other thing that we should take away from this, from today's feast, is to try to imitate the zeal of the apostles. Not to do anything wrong or sinful in, in pursuing that zeal or trying to promote the kingdom, but to be zealous for our faith, to defend our faith, and to promote our faith here in this world, and not to be afraid to suffer for our faith, to be willing to lay down our lives, as was St. Jude and St. Simon the Zealot. Praise the Lord,